Okay, so thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I'm conscious of the fact that many of you have yet to meet me. Most of you, in fact, have yet to meet me. So hello, it's nice to see you all be it virtually for the first time. Um, the purpose of today is really to give you some information about what we're trying to do to keep learning going remotely and also to give you an opportunity to give us some feedback, any suggestions that you might have. Um, just to start off, I should let you know we are recording the session um, and we are planning to share it after we've finished with any parents who are unable to make it this morning. Um, obviously, it's very difficult for us to have a, a dialogue with you with this number of people in the room. Um, but please feel free at any point throughout to use the chat um, box to give us comments, suggestions, ideas, questions. And if we can't answer them during the course of this meeting, we will put together a frequently asked questions document um, and get back to you as a parent body as soon as possible after the meeting. Of course, we may alter our provision slightly based on what you tell us and the feedback we get. Um, and if we do, we will obviously let you know as soon as possible as well. Um, you'll know that we had to move very rapidly um, to remote learning with very little notice. So thank you for your patience as uh, we've got up and running with that. And as we've got better and better, hopefully we will continue to get better and better. I do want to say a personal thanks to our teaching staff who have been absolutely fantastic at, at just getting on with this. Um, as you can imagine, it's, it's well outside the comfort zone of most classroom teachers to suddenly switch to this kind of learning and, and they really have been phenomenal at getting on with it. So I want to just express my gratitude to them for that. Um, I'm going to hand over in a second to Katie Thomas, who is our fabulous assistant head responsible for teaching and learning. And she will talk you through the process of what we do, why we're doing the things we're doing, the rationale around some of our decision making. Um, and then obviously we will open up to comments in the boxes, which we will try to respond to as many of them as possible this morning and then get back to you following that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Katie to talk you through our provision. Right. I'm just going to share a presentation with you just a sec. So just bear with me. OK, so hopefully that will go full screen shortly. I don't want to keep clicking because it's potentially going. Oh, it's, just... it's spinning. So I'll, uh, there we go. <laughs> so, yes, as um, Helen said, we are just going to give you a bit of an outline on our remote learning provision. A lot of this information has already um, come out to students um, and um, parents as well uh, via the website and show my homework. But um, I thought it'd be useful to go over some of the elements that we've been delivering and where we see it going from here. OK, so our provision is um, structured in the following way. Um, we are looking at a combination of live teacher input and um, <coughs> recorded instruction, along with video examples. That's really depending on what is being delivered and what's appropriate for that content. Um, research suggests that um, live input's really excellent for engagement, and that's what we want to use it for. Um, but that for many students, the opportunity to pause their teachers um, and re-listen and go again has been really, really valuable. And we know that that was something that was valued a lot by our students in the first lockdown. Um, live lessons and resources are logged on Show My Homework and on Teams. Um, we envisage longer term moving over to uh, more use of Teams and seeing Show My Homework really just as a diary, but that won't necessarily um, work for everybody, everybody at this stage and we certainly don't want people um, to get confused, so that's why we've used Show My Homework in and continue to do that in this way. The lessons that are being delivered, our teams, um, our subject teams are focused on the key content and learning. There have, as you can imagine, had to be some decisions made about what we deliver and when, what is suitable for remote provision and what is not. And obviously for subjects with a practical element, that's been particularly challenging. 
but teams had been working on this since the start of the year and had already tweaked curriculum plans so luckily a lot of that had already been considered and it was quite straightforward to make most of those decisions. That doesn't mean that we're kicking them down the road and not thinking about them, we are um, making adjustments as we go to ensure optimum um, coverage. Quizzes and assessments are operating as a way for students to keep track of their learning, but also as a way for teachers to see where students might need some additional support um, and to see what needs reteaching, to be, to be honest. Um, assessments sometimes might operate via Microsoft Forms, but where they're a bit longer, um, students are sometimes being asked to photograph their work and submit it via email or using the assignments um, module on Teams. They'll be asked to uh, submit their work in different ways um, according to teacher requests. So I'm just going to go through a few uh, more precise elements of what um, we're doing. So as I've said, Satchel One, uh, previously known as Show My Homework and Teams, are our primary provision. And we're trying to use that right from the get-go, getting students logged in to Teams. That's a slightly um, old slide there. It should be 8.50, but as you know, we've uh, changed to school day. But they need to log into Satchel One and log in to their school email where they will find the link um, to their form time, hopefully on their email, but also in Show My Homework. Um, their day is going to be organised um, in the usual way of the timetable and Mrs Harris has already communicated we've uh, streamlined the hours of the day just to make sure that there's a break from screen time and also a little bit of time for people to move from one meeting to another and get resources sorted. We've tried to log um, materials on Show My Homework, lessons on Show My Homework in, in a standard fashion, so they should look something like that, just so that students can uh, keep track and that parents can see what lessons going on. Um, one of the other things that we have done for the last couple of weeks is popped an outline of the work for that week in a digested form on our website and there is a link to that in the newsletter. So if you want to be able to have conversations um, with your child about what it is they're going to be doing in the coming week and you come home on, on a Wednesday and uh, you can have a little look and see, oh well I've seen science this week, you should be looking at cells, tell me a little bit about what you've done today and hopefully that will make you um, informed and able to have those conversations which we really appreciate you having um, with your young people. Um, students as I've said uh, know what they need to do um, because they are looking on Show My Homework and Teams and that seems to be working quite well there were some glitches early on and really appreciate people keeping us updated with those and where there are technical problems we'll do our best to support um, those too. And as I've said, resources are provided on Teams, I'm showing homework, and there is um, an exit activity, usually a quiz at the end of lessons, and then a cycle of assessment is in operation. Um, each unit of learning building towards an assessment where the teacher can make decisions about what needs to be retaught and what can be um, banked and we can move on. As I've said, invited to a live lesson means you're going on Teams. They should be in the student's calendar tab. Um, if not, they're within the team itself, so they can click on their team. Um, but as I said, a calendar tab is the best place for them to look at for that. Um, we've given students a live lesson protocol, but I have to say I've been really impressed with student conduct in live lessons. Uh, a little bit novel to start with, obviously, a bit of, bit of excitement, um, very keen to wave hello to their teachers in the chat. Um, but they are using the chat to ask um, questions. We've got teachers creating polls in the chat to check understanding um, and they've been respectful and appropriate. So we're really grateful um, for that. Submissions of work has been going well. Um, what we need is students to be completing that exit quiz, whatever they're asked to do. As I say, it's often a link on Microsoft Forms, but many are taking photographs of their work. Some of the more technologically savvy, creating PDFs using free uh, PDF scanners like the Adobe app on their phone, taking a photo and then they can send the scan document. And I know a lot of year 11 did that with their mock exams. Um, again, that weekly digest should help you to see what work um, will need to be submitted if it's a really key piece. We don't want to overwhelm you with all the minute detail, um, but like I say, we're just trying to give you uh, the ability to have informed conversations. So that information hopefully should be helpful too. And obviously we are really keen that this is sustainable. We are in this for a fairly long period. And as, as you will know, 
it's indeterminate. We don't know when that's going to end um, exactly. So it's really important that students develop effective and sustainable working habits. We try to do what we can from our end in terms of maintaining the timetable and sticking to routines and also having that live input that hopefully will help to structure the day. Um, but the most important thing is where there is any concern, any struggling, that, that students and parents communicate with us and, and let us help and do what we can. Um, be it, you know, do <clears throat> I don't have a desk to work at, let's see what we can do. Um, computer problems, let's see what we can do. Um, I went through some possible worries and concerns with students. I'm not sure um, that these haven't really been covered, but um, that will be on these slides and we'll send those out again. I think the crucial thing is if they don't understand something, they just must ask and they can ask in the chat and they can ask via email, they can ask in their live lessons. Some students understandably are quite reticent to speak in um, live lessons. So do encourage um, your children to use the chat and to contact their teachers via email. Obviously, it's important that they uh, write appropriately to their teachers and everybody has been really pleased with the, the manner and, and politeness of their contact from students. That's been really well received when teachers are um, doing new and unusual things. It's very nice to receive a thank you at the end of, of a lesson or an email saying, oh, I wasn't quite sure about this. Some students showing that they want to um, take charge of their learning. Um, feedback will um, be different in different subjects. It's quite possible that at the end of a cycle of learning, there'll be whole class feedback on the strengths and areas for development. Obviously, in the recent mock exams, they will be marked in more detail. That really will vary according to subject, but we know how important it is for students to have feedback so that they can see where they're at and where they need to go next. And that will be part of the cycle of learning. So it's just some contacts on there, depending on your year teams. I'm sure you're all aware of these and they're obviously all on the, the who's who um, area of our website for subject teachers. Any subject concerns, um, if you spe specifically asked your child or yourselves to contact the subject teacher in the first instance, um, and then they will hopefully be able to deal with any queries. From here, um, we're going to start to think about homework and wider reading and extension work. Um, obviously, what we've worked on over the past couple of weeks is re-establishing the school day for students while they're at home. Um, but as, as you know, homework is an important part of um, consolidation and development of students' learning. So we're looking at about how that can be achieved in a manageable way. Sorry, I've chopped off my own word there. Um, and then wider reading and extension work for students who want to take their learning a little bit further. Again, how we can manage that um, and still help students not to feel overwhelmed by the, the school day sort of extending on further. So that's sort of the outline of our provision. That's what we've been delivering so far. Um, and so perhaps now we just open the floor to some yeah. questions from you and I'll just get rid of my screen. Absolutely. It'd be great to hear from you. Any comments or suggestions or questions that you have, you just pop them into the chat. I would reiterate what um, Katie has said about the student engagement, which is that we have been incredibly impressed. I mean, engagement has been fantastic. We have really high rates. What's that one? Can you read that? We have really high rates of uh, attendance at every lesson, um, well up into the 90% in uh, most year groups most of the time. So that is really, really pleasing um, and much higher than it was previously. So that's great. And the kids are really working hard and, and doing what's asked of them. So we are very, very impressed with them. So thank you for your support in that because we know that that comes very much from the parents as well as the students. 